I implemented the new thumbnail design best practice that is going on on YouTube now and I got an amazing result and that's what I'm going to talk to you guys. God bless you for joining in. So before I get into the details of the applications that I used and how I got this, I've got an announcement for you guys. Now the first announcement for today is over on, on Overworks. If you check the community tab, I have launched the first giveaway on Overworks. I want to be a part of your joy. And to that effect prior, I put out a poll post and quite a number of the community members voted for give 2k to five people and that will be the basis of this giveaway so during this giveaway at the end of it five random people are going to be selected and i will be sending them cash prizes for free all you have to do to be a part of this is go to the community tab check out the post and you will find all the steps to get in there and then lastly ensure to check out this video for the sonic lag airdrops which is currently worth 130 million that is going to be some big rewards at the end of the day now with that said let us get right back to how i was able to make this design right here now if we look at this design i use the combination of three applications the first one is canva the second one is capcut and yes capcut is a video editing software but there are ways around it if you know exactly what you want and then the last one is photop photop is an online version of your photoshop software now if you do not have a computer that can run the native photoshop standalone software which demands high specifications on your laptop you could actually just use photop which is web-based and you could give you all it will give you all the results that you want like it did for me so if we look at this image right here you see the dark shadows which is called the vignetti effect coming in from the four corners of this rectangle box and then of course we have a black background and then of course we have a grid which is transparent you can see the background of the image and then we have the straight to the point word which is 130 million and then of course we have the sonic logo that's it that's how i made this i think is in just like four layers or thereabouts i was able to achieve this design and it has given me this result so if we look at all of the results again youtube search happens to be the highest traffic as of the time of recording now this video is under two it's not even up to two days old a channel my size and you can see right here that the more views come from youtube search which tells us one thing that this video right here with this thumbnail has been able to win the interest of the users when they search for whatever they search for which if we check the search term that they use a majority of the views came from youtube search and the search term if we check the option right here happens to be sonic labs airdrop so whether they search this on google or whether they search this on youtube my video pops up in the list and the viewers are interested to want to see what i have to say about the airdrop so ladies and gentlemen let us get into the details of how i did this the first step that i did was to head over to canva and of course in the canva you see the blank canvas the first thing that i did was to import the black background clicking on the element button here and then you can see in my recently used history this is the black background but the name you can use to get and explore is just type black background right right here and then this is the one you can see it's still in my history recent and if i click on the black background the one that i used like i showed you guys before is on the photos so if we click on the see all button for all the black background photos this is the one right here so i'll just click on it and it's going to import it to the canvas and i'll just expand this all the way to the top and expand this all the way to the bottom now that is fine out of the way the next element we want is the grid so if i just do a search for grid you can see the history right here of course the grid itself is a graphics file so we just click on all the graphics file right here and scrolling all the way to the top this is the one that i use the reason i use this is because it is tiny by the time i click on this you're going to see that of course it is black it is transparent we can see through it so first things first is to switch the color from black to white and this is white right here and i'll just expand this all the way expand all the way to the top here and then expand all the way to the bottom like we did for the background image now this is fine it's looking nice simple so the next thing i did 
was to of course download this file so you just click on the share button click on the download button and then click on all pages and not all pages but the current page and then done and when I click on the download button it downloaded the file and it brought it right here so this is the file right here so now we move on to the second application which is CapCut like I said CapCut is a video editing software but if you know how to use CapCut you can actually use it to manipulate photos and do everything that you want now you can see I have previously imported the file here and this was the first extract that I did this is the second extract that I did so for the sakes of practical let me delete this from the time the timeline and just bring in the file again so this is what we downloaded and now what I'm gonna do next is you can see the adjustments tab is open I'm just gonna scroll all the way to the bottom where we have the Vignetti settings and I'll click and notice as I drag all the way to the right you're gonna be noticing that the dark shadows like we have in the original the finished copy you will notice that there is this blend of the dark tone coming in from the four edges of this rectangle box creating some form of focus around the middle directing the eyes of the viewer to just focus on this right here now this is high level contrasting just basically using black and white nothing fancy nothing serious you're able to see it and the brain is able to make sense of what um, the content creator which is overworks myself was trying to achieve so if we go back to CapCut and I'll just click and drag all the way notice how that the dark shadows the dark tones are coming in from all four corners of the rectangle box so if I take it all the way till the end we we'll see it has changed now the next thing we want to do is we we'll click on this hamburger icon right here you have to use the CapCut desktop version okay so we'll click here and then click on the export steel frame and if I click on the export steel frame we're just gonna name this project right project that's fine and of course just verify the address where the file is so it's in overworks professional thumbnail layout cool so click on cancel and just export now the file will be exported this file will be exported from you can see still from exported so we sort of have like a should I call it thumbnail basic layout already right so the next thing we want to do now is to go over to the last software for today which is photo P the photo manipulation software the online version of Photoshop but before we do that ladies and gentlemen please if I take you guys to overworks at this point in time if you've watched the video this far consider subscribing I appreciate you for the time so far and I know that you have learned 18 or 2 but before we put in the finishing effect please subscribe turn on the bell notifications and give this video a like and let us get right back to the finishing aspect of the video so if we click on photo P right here you can actually access it this is the web address just say photo P.com and this is what we get so as you can see this is an already designed layout but the way I did this is just to click on the file click on new if you click on new you can see all the various um, thumbnails under the socials tab we have the YouTube thumbnail and you could just set your width your dimensions the width is 1920 and then the height is 1080 pixel and when you're done just leave everything as is and click on the create button and you should get the same thing like this so once you have this the next thing we want to import the file that we exported from the last software which is CapCut so what I'm gonna do is to locate the folder where the file was kept under professional thumbnails click on layout and then the name of the file that we used was called project so that's it right here I'm gonna click hold drag all the way back to photo P and release photo P is going to read this file and then import it just by clicking and dragging and we have the file right here now you can see that it is looking clean simple and nice the next thing I want to do is to if we look at the model of the finished design is we have the sonic logo and it is sitting right on one of the grid lines and it is resting against one of the grid lines on the what vertical axis and then of course it is sitting on one of the grid lines on the horizontal axis at the end of the day it tends to create this feel that the edges are sort of like glowy and shiny which is an extra layer of effect 
So what we're going to do is to go back to Photo P and just click on this. Click on the downloads where we have the logo for Sonic Labs. This is the logo for Sonic Labs right here. Again, we'll click and drag over the Photo P file and that will import the file one and then create a new layer for the file right here on the layers tab. So just like I said, we'll have the layer file. A total of three layers have been created, which is like the background for the first. The second is for the project where we'll have this grid. And then the last is the logo we just imported. So I'm going to move this guy all the way to the top. I'm going to reduce the size. I'm going to reduce the size. And then I'll just fit it to, you know, like we said, rest on the X axis. Maybe I'll just expand this so it will just be sitting in the box like this. And maybe just expand this a little bit. Expand this a little bit. Cool. So at the end of the day, so let's just move this in. So if I click on this background right here, you can see that it is sort of like sitting. This is really cool, although it's not that perfect, but we get the sense, we get the sense that, sorry about that. We get the sense that the image is sort of sitting in a box and it creates this um, embroidered, embroidered effect. Now, the next thing I want to do is to add, I'll just delete this text layer here and then we'll click on the text, the type tool once more and just click over on the image and this will create a new text layer. So on this new text layer, it will check the model of the design that I have, would see the short straight to the point caption that I use, 130 million referring to the worth of this Sonic Labs airdrop. And that's what we're going to replicate. So to do that, we just type the dollar, 130 million, which is M in capital letter, and just move the mouse away from that and just drag the text character or we'll drag the text character and try to fill it up in the screen now you know that on, on YouTube there seems to be a when you post stuff on YouTube there is a portion of the lower third to the right that the bottom right corner that is eaten away by the the time of the video right so i have that in mind and if we look at the model of the design here the image is sort of like you still have like a space to breathe between the border of the thumbnail and the the letter and of course the border of the thumbnail to the left of the screen and the dollar sign so that's what we're going to replicate so we're going to go back to photo p and we'll click on the move tool and we'll just reduce this a bit so the way I'm going to do that is I'll just click on the shift button. I'll click on the shift button and just try to reduce it from that end like so. And then I'll go over to the other side, click on the shift button down again, and then click and then drag like so. Okay, cool. So at the end of the day, I'm done. I'll go back, click on the, the move tool and I'll just click on the background. And this is it. So one other thing you would notice from the model is there is a bit of space between the, the bottom of the logo and the top of the letter. And if you look at our design right here on Photo P, there seems to be no room for these um, characters to breathe. Now what I'm gonna do is to click on the text, which is the 130 million, and just use my arrow key, tap it down to create that space for breathing. Now, there is one other thing that is here. If you notice, the light that is coming from the light that is coming from the grid right here is sort of like competing with the light that is coming from the letters. And for me, yes, the brain can actually differentiate it, but there seems to be some sort of there needs to be some sort of separation between the light that is coming coming that is coming from the letters and the light that is coming from the grid. Now the way I'm gonna fix this is to click on the the grid, which is this layer right here. I'll click on it. And when I click on it, I'll click on this curve right here to reduce the light that comes from the grid so the only light i want to be seen coming from this image right here as the model implies is the letter 
okay now this is contrast contrast is using different opposite colors to you know represent themselves well if you could actually use it with black and white the more good the more better so what i'm going to do is i'll just click on the middle part and drag it down and notice how the notice how the see but that is two way okay i think i like this like so i think i like this like so now the next thing i'm going to do is to reduce the brightness as well okay great now i think we have something that is less busy right i think we do so you can see now that the item is finished but if we look at the one that i have if we look at the grid color it is sort of gray and i remember how this is if we go back to canva if we go back to my canva design if we go back to my canva design the way to fix that is to switch this grid color if we click on the color settings here we could just you know go to the color picker option and just make it some sort of gray okay notice that it is gray now and if we look at the finished you can see yeah that is gray now this way when we eventually come over to photo p we're going to have the grayish effect which is like this all the way here that way we're able to separate and we'll realize the final design now this is how i was able to make this practice experiment with all of the ideas that you have and when you find something like i said there is really no textbook approach to making thumbnails i have struggled to make thumbnails and i have just been experimenting i have not given up i do not give up right i've just been experimenting different ideas different styles looking up what's there in the youtube space what other creators are doing and trying to just spice up my ideas and then i came up with this so when you're done with the file the next thing you want to do first you can actually save the file you could save if you want or you could save it as psd it will be stored as a photoshop document and you could just import the same file into your photoshop software and just continue your manipulations there or if you're ready you could just click on this export as and export these are the different options so we'll just click on the png here which is how i like to export my files and once you have it ready you could just rename it however you want you could leave the format the way it is and here is the width which is 1920 by 1080 and when you're done you just click on save and when we save the file we'll click on the download icon right here you can notice that i've actually done one before you could just click on the folder icon and it comes here this is it and we just click on enter so it's give you some time it's going to load up and it will give us the information and here we are with the final copy and this is the design that i used in this video right here now you could notice that the whole process because i was explaining and all like i said it's an experimental process so when you're experimenting different ideas your design time might take time depending on how skilled you are and here is a video right here and if we click on the see more button like i said youtube search has been the biggest source of traffic to this video and that's it for this video thank you guys for watching don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe turn on the bell notifications and yes do not forget the updates that i gave you guys on overworks the giveaway is happening check the community tab to be a part of that giveaway right this is the post right here and of course if we look in the video section check out the video on sonic airdrops which is worth over 130 million and get started and the catch on this is less than 20,000 people are actually interacting with this project that is worth 120 million dollars which is this which means there's going to be a lot more for every participant to partake of so that's it for this video god bless you thank you for your time i'll see you guys in the next one take care